Something strange is happening in the inner solar system. NASA's most advanced spacecraft are quietly turning their attention toward an object that shouldn't exist, an interstellar wanderer known as 3 Eye Atlas. Right now, it's hidden behind the sun, lost in the glare where even our best optics fall blind. From Earth, there is nothing to see, only a silence in the data where a question should be. And yet before it disappeared, telescopes caught a glimpse, and that glimpse changed everything. Because on October 25th, 2025, 3 Eye Atlas did something no comet on record has ever done. It grew a tail that pointed toward the sun, not away from our star, toward it. Not a drifting fan of dust carried downwind by radiation pressure. A tight, coherent plume pressing directly into the solar storm. Within hours, priorities shifted. Hubble changed filters. Webb retasked spectrometers. Ground arrays nudged schedules open like a theater clearing its stage before an unscripted act. No press conferences, no red banners. Just a surge of attention moving through the network like a current. The label changed quietly in internal dashboards. High interest non-local object. The pictures weren't ambiguous. From Gemini South in Chile and Tade in the Canary Islands, the images agreed. A slim column of material on the sunlit side forward facing. The first instinct was caution. Maybe an edge-on illusion, an exposure artifact, a geometry trick. But the follow-ups held. The plume persisted for hours. Stable. Focused. Aligned. On Earth, a jet like that would demand a vent, a nozzle, a designed pressure release. In space, we invoke a natural crack, superheated volatiles bursting out along a sunlit fracture. But those events are chaotic and brief. This was. This looked like thrust. Then chemistry joined the conversation. Weeks earlier, the James Webb Space Telescope had stared into the infrared and found a ratio almost no one expected. CO2 outgassing roughly eight times stronger than H2O in most comets, water is the dominant driver. Here, carbon dioxide was in charge, hotter, harder, expanding faster. If that sunward plume is CO2 rich, you don't just get a pretty jet. You get force, direction, a tiny vector that can, over time, move worlds. It wasn't the only surprise. Spectra from Hawaii's Keck and Chile's VLT logged vaporized nickel, with no iron signature alongside it. In nature, nickel and iron are twins. They form together, fuse together, vaporize together. Finding one without the other is like smoke without fire. Some teams pointed to exotic nickel carbonyl chemistry, molecules that can form in ultra-cold environments and break apart under heat. Plausible, but uncomfortably close to a process. We use industrially to purify metals. Coincidence? Maybe. But coincidences stacked on behavior become patterns, and patterns demand attention. Meanwhile, the motion itself began to speak. Precision orbit fits showed a small but stubborn non-gravitational drift. That's not unheard of, comets outgas, and escaping gas nudges the nucleus. But here, the drift wasn't aligned with the usual antisolar exhaust. It leaned toward the sunward plume, as if the forward jet were acting like a micro-thruster, swaying the path by millimeters per second just enough to matter when you cross millions of kilometers of sky. It echoes a memory, Taumuamua 2017, a different interstellar visitor, a different anomaly, no visible coma, no jets at all, and yet a measurable push no one could pin to pure gravity. Back then, we had motion without a mechanism. Here, we might have a mechanism and motion that still refuses to be simple. And then there's the part the instruments did see, but the algorithms did. Buried in routine logs, a quiet flag from Webb's A-assisted prioritization system. Manual review requested. Not because a human told it to. Because the machine saw a patterned light curve. Brightness changes that were rhythmic, not random. The kind of rhythm you get when flat or repeating facets roll through sunlight. Not a rough, dusty potato tumbling through space. Something with surfaces. No one at the agencies has made claims. The language remains careful as it should, but the chronology is telling. The AI flag predated the plume. The system didn't know the narrative. It only knew the data didn't fit anything it had seen before. Across history, people noticed when the sky broke its rules. Babylon called them omens. China, broom stars sweeping dynasties aside. Egypt forged blades from meteoric iron and buried kings with metal from the night. 
Today, we don't call them omens. We call them anomalies, and we chase them with telescopes instead of priests. But the feeling is the same, a hush, a breath held between frames. So where are we really? Set aside the drama, stack the facts as they stand, a forward-facing plume on the sunward side, coherent, sustained, multi-instrument confirmed, CO2 dominant outgassing, unusual chemistry that can produce strong directional thrust in a low-gravity body, nickel without iron in the coma, either exotic natural chemistry or something far stranger, non-gravitational drift whose timing and direction lean toward the sunward jet, an AI-flagged light curve, patterned reflectivity that implies smoother geometry than typical comet rubble, quiet reprioritization of assets, Hubble, Webb, ground giants, without public alarm but with unmistakable urgency. Now add the geometry. 3i Atlas is interstellar, on a hyperbolic track that will carry it out forever. But its approach is cooperative, not a steep, random dive but a path close to the ecliptic plane, the thin sheet where our planets live. That makes tracking easier, spectroscopy cleaner and comparison sharper. It also makes the statistics uneasy. Objects from elsewhere rarely arrive so politely aligned. What happens next depends on perihelion, the moment of closest approach to the sun. That's when the energy peaks, the gas roars, and fragile objects sometimes tear themselves apart. It's also the perfect moment, if an object were able to maneuver. In orbital mechanics, we call it leveraging the Oberth effect. The faster you're moving in a deep gravity well, the more you get from every whisper of thrust. A brief push at perihelion can rewrite a journey. Will 3i Atlas flare and fragment? shedding clues like pages torn from a book. Will it harden and hold, the jet sharpening as sunlight surges? Or will the plume cut out and the drift fall silent, as if a switch were turned? While it hides in the glare, the world is setting the table. Major observatory are dividing search grids for reacquisition. Amateurs with precise mounts and dark skis are standing by to stack the first faint photons after reappearance. Teams have their playbooks open. Brightness curves to catch unexpected flares. Astrometric residuals to measure deviations down to tens of milliarc seconds. Polarimetry to decode the dust and ice grain physics. Spectra to watch the nickel story either deepen or evaporate. There are dates circled on calendars across the planet. Windows where light, angle, and distance all favor answers. If 3i Atlas returns exactly where models predict and fades exactly as physics demands, the mystery narrows. If it returns off schedule, too bright, too dim, or not at all, the mystery widens. And if it reappears, not alone, because here's a possibility no one wants to lead with, but no one can fully ignore. If that forward plume is more than venting, if it's coordinated, pulsed, or tied to a geometry we don't see, then we might not just be watching a rock reacting to sunlight. We might be watching an object interacting with it, testing, steering, using the star not as hazard but as tool. That doesn't mean artificial, it means unknown. Unknown chemistry, unknown structure, unknown discipline of physics where materials behave in regimes we've barely probed. Interstellar space is a factory that runs on timescales longer than civilizations. It can produce relics that look like intent without ever being touched by hands. But sometimes precision is a language. Sometimes the way something holds its course is a sentence. Sometimes a plume that should not exist is not an error, but a message. For now, all we can do is watch well. Watch the brightness. If it fades too slowly after perihelion, that's heat retained or energy added. Watch the timing. A reacquisition delayed by days could mean a nudge no one saw. Watch the drift. A persistent offset aligned with the sunward vector tells us the plume is not a flare, it's a force. Watch the spectrum. If nickel holds and iron stays absent, the chemistry chapter gets harder, not easier. And watch the sky around it. If a second, fainter target appears on the same arc, a shard, a fragment, a passenger, then the story changes again. Ancients called comets harbingers. We call them datasets. The difference is vocabulary. The awe is the same. Whatever 3i Atlas proves to be, natural, engineered, or simply other. It has already done what rare visitors do best. It has reminded us that our rules are local, that our certainty is small, and that beyond the bright ring of our sun, 
The dark is full of travelers with stories older than our words for them. The sky has broken a rule. Now we wait to hear what else it's willing to break.